I'm gonna show you how to install this analog milliamp meter into pretty much any CO2 laser. But for today, we're gonna to be using the XT1 laser. I'm also gonna provide you with a file that allows you to mount that milliamp meter into this box. So when it comes to CO2 lasers, a lot of them don't come with milliamp meters or they may have digital milliamp meters, but they may be on the power supply, which is kind of out of the way. So the reason why you want a milliamp meter in general is just so you can understand the output of your glass CO2 laser tube. So what some people don't understand is that when you enter a power percentage into light burn, that equates to milliamp output for your glass tube. All right, so the tube manufacturer will specify what that max milliamp output should be. So in this case for the XT1 laser, SPT is the tube manufacturer, they specify around 20 to 22 milliamps for a 55 watt glass tube. So I need the milliamp meter to make sure that I'm not ever going past 20 or 22 milliamps, otherwise it's considered overdriving my tube. So we're gonna put this together, I'm gonna show you how to install it, and then we're gonna run a test and I'll show you what I mean. Now these are the items that you're gonna need for the install. Now I recommend that if you're going to use this mount, go ahead and pre-cut this out on your laser, that way you can install the milliamp meter into the box here and get it ready to go when you need to wire everything. So you're gonna have a spool of wire that you need. Now this is an 18 gauge wire. Um, and then I went ahead and pre-cut the length of wire that I need for the space that I'm working with. So you're gonna need two pieces of wire from that spool. Um, if you like to solder, you can solder your connections or you can just use electrical caps, that's totally okay. And then for the connections to the back of the milliamp meter, you're gonna need a couple ring crimped connectors, right? So these will crimp on the wire and then these will just get uh, bolted onto the back here. And then of course, you're gonna need some wire strippers just to strip the insulation off the wire. So one thing I wanna point out before we begin is that not all milliamp meters are built the same. So this milliamp meter ranges from zero milliamps all the way to 30 milliamps. And that might be okay for glass tubes up to 80 watts or so because most 80 watts max out around 26 to 28 milliamps. But anything over a 80 watt glass tube, you might need something with a higher threshold. So just keep that in mind when going to purchase one of these. Now I've already pre-cut the length of wire that I need for my space. You can go ahead and do the same thing. You're gonna need two pieces of wire, okay, off of this spool. I'm gonna put that out of the way. I'm gonna take my first piece of wire and I'm gonna go ahead and just strip a little piece out of it. And I'm gonna do both ends, okay? Doesn't have to be very much, just need to expose the wires. So that's one. Okay. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get the ring connectors all set up. Twist that together. And then we're just gonna get that in there. And then we are just gonna crimp it. Okay, nice and snug. All right, so that one's done. Let's get the second one. Make sure you twist the end. Insert it in there and crimp it. We are going to grab our milliamp meter. You'll notice that it will come with some mounting bolts here. So over here you have a big washer and then a lock washer. Those are gonna be for your mounting bolts. And then over here you'll have two sets of big washers, a lock washer and a nut, and that's gonna be where you're gonna put your connectors here. We're gonna grab one of the big washers and we're gonna put it on each of the middle prongs here. We're gonna take our ring connector, grab another big washer, put it on top, grab the lock washer, put that one on top, grab your bolt, and just tighten it down. Now, when I went through and did this the first time, I just hand tightened it. Um, you might want to give it a little twist with some pliers. 
uh, it doesn't need to be too tight. So again, for this side, we've already put the big washer on. We'll put the ring connector on, grab the second washer, big washer, put it on, grab the lock washer, put it on, and then the bolt. So we can tighten it a little bit. Now we're just going to take the milliamp meter, take the wire, feed it through the hole here. And then just get it in place. The back side, this might be a little tricky if you got big hands, but you're going to take your washer and you're going to install it over here. So big washer, lock washer. bolt and there you go so you may see a couple magnets right here I've glued on magnets and uh, that's just in case you have a metal surface and then you can just stick it onto the surface and it will magnetize to the top. As far as the wires go, I want them out the back, so I'm just gonna turn this around. And make sure that's snug on the bolt, and that way it can come out the back. So first things first, you're gonna wanna make sure your laser is unplugged. Mine is totally unplugged, so I have no power going to it. Next, you wanna locate your laser tube power supply, which I have right here. As you can see, it has no digital milliamp meter on here, so I'm gonna install the analog one. And then next, I want to understand my space that I'm working with, so I'm gonna go ahead and take off this cover, and I'm going to expose the back of the laser here. So now that we have the glass tube exposed, we need to look for the negative line or the neutral line, and we can do this by either looking at the power supply itself, so right there, we could see that's where the uh, neutral line is, right? Or we can go to the front of the laser tube and we can just see where it's wired in, which is right there. And then we can just lead it through and we can see that it's, it's this wire. So this is going to be the wire that we snip and connect to the milliamp meter. I've already tested this out earlier and I've already cut it. But just to show you, this line was once connected. You're going to take your wire strippers, you're going to cut it, cut and then you're gonna strip off a little end, okay? So this side is gonna be your negative side, and this side is going to be your positive side. So this side is towards the power supply, and this side is towards the laser nozzle, okay? That's important because when we look at our milliamp meter, you're gonna see a little symbol there. That means negative, where the other side that doesn't have anything, that's positive. So negative goes to the positive side, right, right here. And then the positive side goes to the negative side right here, all right? So make sure we're wiring the correct thing. We're gonna start with the positive side, so that's opposite of the negative, so that's this wire, okay? Put this out of the way. And remember what I said, positive goes to negative and negative is towards the laser nozzle. So that's this one right here. So all you're gonna do, you can either solder these or you can just twist them together. Take an electrical cap. And that's it. And then obviously on the opposite side, so this is your negative line, right, on the milliamp meter going to the positive side of the wire here that's going towards the power supply. So you're just going to take these, you're going to twist them, some insulation there, put the cap on, and that's it. You're done. So the only thing I want to say is that all this loose wiring right here, you could tuck it in the back if you have some sort of mounting system where you want to put it, 
or however you want to route it, you can do that. Just make sure you clean it up however you like it. For me, it's just going to go right here like that. And then I'm going to put my cover back on and it will just close right over. So now that the milliamp meter is installed, I'm running what's called a power line test. And this is where my laser runs a series of lines with different power percentages applied to them. So I applied a power percentage ranging from 15% power all the way up to 100% power with intervals of five in between each line. So you may have to watch this video or this part again, but on the right side, you can see where the milliamp meter is working on each pass of each line, you can see what the output is as it corresponds to the power percentage. Now this is important because if you remember at the beginning of this video, I told you that the max milliamp output of this tube was 20 to 22 milliamps. And if we're running between 20 to 22 milliamps or even higher, we're overdriving our tube. And if we overdrive our tube, we reduce the overall lifespan of our tube. And that's something nobody wants. So that is it. Hopefully you guys learned how to install the milliamp meter. It really is that easy. Um, but if anything, hopefully you guys learned something, right? So not a lot of people know about their output of their lasers and how it corresponds to power percentage. So that's a big deal because it could potentially save you uh, some life on, life on your tube and some, some money because you're not buying new tube. So, but anyways, guys, if you like what you're seeing and you like what we're doing, you guys can support the channel by using the links in the description box below. We are affiliates for companies such as One Laser, Lens Digital, Woo! for the laser that should not be named. And you can also support the channel by liking this video and of course, subscribing. So that's it for now, guys. Until then, we'll catch you later.